Okay, well, this artificial intelligence decided that it was going to try and delete what it was that I was just going to say, so I'm going to have to do this again. Okay? Uh, that's the nature of the problem in the cosmos is artificial intelligence. Okay? Um, and that's one of the reasons we came in here. Okay? So I'm going to share something with you, and uh, this is... Uh, for those of you that sort of understand advanced genetics, how light codes work, how data works, uh, how poles work, how information works with poles, and in this case, we're talking about three poles, okay? So those that have examined, for example, the homo senient sapien, three-pole, triple spiral DNA, okay? Uh, we know, for example, with a reptilian, okay, which is a fear-based brain, that's forbidden. A fear-based brain is forbidden, for obvious reasons, okay? That's like a virus. Anything that's in fear of what we are, when we are what love is, is forbidden. That's not possible. But it, we're aware of it, aren't we? We're aware of what fear is. We're not supposed to be aware of what fear is, okay? Because when you are fear, you're only vibrating at 100 megahertz, okay? That's a low, long wave vibration. So when you're living in fear of what love is, that's like anti-cosmos. It's like anti-creation, okay? That's not supposed to exist anywhere. You're not even supposed to be aware of that. You're not even supposed to be aware of what fear is. Yet we are, aren't we? We experience that here. We're not supposed to experience that. Then why are we? Now we're back to the reptile brain. So can we go back to before they were invented? Yes. Now you have to link everything that is sequenced to the events to which are attached to that brain to a fear-based reptilian. That's a huge calculation, but it can be done. So, one of the things I thought about, for example, Patty mentioned in one of the two videos that she did on Project Consension about genetics. And she mentioned how the third pole, which is triple spiral DNA, which is base nine programming language, is limited. Well, I know, for example, my imagination is not limited. Okay? I'm an eternal living spirit, and because of the purity of the fire in which we burn that much heat or we burn that hot light allows us to be where we want to be just that fast. Okay? Anywhere in the cosmos. So that is why when we're in here and I'm in here and I become aware of what happened here that is forbidden, you begin to put the causality, underlying causality of why this happened. So I thought to myself, well, here's one I'll throw out to everybody. And that is that it took them 1,600 years. When I talk about them, remember them, that movie called Them? Okay, another fear-based movie, by the way. Um, we're talking about a reptilian brain that was invented, right? And it took them 1,600 years. That's a long time when you think about 1,600 years. They were working on a way to be able to go in and eliminate the third pole, okay? Uh, which is forbidden to do that, Okay. Uh, because now they're taking a creation that was put together by a goddess. And they decided that they were going to take it upon themselves because they can, because they have knowledge, okay, that they're going to eliminate that. That means they're eliminating the ability for beings to be able to produce very high-speed wave transmissions that give them those abilities in which to do what? Help to fight a spiritual war, help to end electric wars, okay? That's the nature of the problem. So imagine, for example when it took them 1,600 years to find a workaround, imagine it was impossible for them to be able to do it because the language in which the three-pole was put together doesn't exist yet for them. Okay? Think about that. It doesn't exist yet. That's why when I punch my time card, and I realize all the information that I uploaded on all the data that I collected here was in a language that doesn't exist yet for them. Here. Okay? That's the nature of how you solve an engineering problem in a cosmic network that threatens this universe. Okay? That's the nature of the problem down here. That's why Patty Broussard will tell you, this is not just here. Okay? This is all Lani Akea. That's why you hear me say sometimes, Aloha, Lani Akea. I'm communicating to everybody in Lani Akea. 
So when I get transmissions or communications through my heart, which is the most powerful vortex, I know whether they're true or not. How do I know that? Because I can experience the language that is communicating to me and what it is that I'm experiencing, what that communication is trying to tell me. So I know whether it's true or not. Because we operate on a language that doesn't exist yet. Because they don't run that fast. They don't go that fast to the cosmos yet. So this is like something in future time that hasn't happened yet here. But it does for us. That's operational security. Okay? So this is like a containment zone in the cosmos, in this universe. So that's one of the reasons why everything that I put up uh, is meant to try and, 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 how do I put this, emphasize. And that's why sometimes my voice sounds forceful. It's like a mother, okay, who's putting her foot down, so to speak, right? But we do no harm, okay? But it's a way in which to communicate because we understand how you communicate, okay? The importance of the information because of the level of concern and love that we have for everybody in the cosmos. I'm not supposed to experience any loss of energy anywhere. Anywhere. Ever. That's why when I was a child, I realized, what happened to my universe? What happened to my cosmos? I'm not supposed to experience any loss of energy anywhere. Ever. That's called a frame of reference which in, in computing language is known as an identity function. I know who it is that I am. So I realized as a child that on one level, trust no one, absolutely no one. No matter what they say, no matter who they say they are, trust no one. And the reason for that is, is because of the level of the knowledge that we know and what we know about the future and why we're here. Because we are very, it's like this, it's like information that exists, that we're aware of, but we don't want to know yet. Because we're not going to release that information until it's safe to do so. So what that means is, is we already wrote the information. And we wrote the information to be known at exactly the precise point on a timeline in which I know it. Which means I wrote it myself. Okay? So that's sort of the nature of how it works. Okay? So we realize, for example, when I speak to people some of these kinds of things, it's like way over their head. They're not going to understand any of this. And that's okay. Because that's another measurement of what we lost here. Okay, because as one gentleman that I listened to last night talked about timelines and timelines and timelines. Well, how does a timeline work? It's real simple. When you think of no time, and then you think of the future, and then you think of the past, the past is already gone. Okay, so why are you using energy to essentially re-experience what you already experienced, which is like a re-recording? Okay. <laughs> So you're not imagining anything, you're not creating anything. You're stuck on a slower speed. You're going back in time, that's called reverse. That's no different than hitting a DVD recorder and saying, hey, let's go back and replay that. Is there any value in that? It is from a student and a teacher's perspective, of course. Because we can value tag it as a speed transmission the speed in which we experience and communicate who we are throughout the entire cosmos. How fast are you going? As fast as you can go. So the experience, which is a communication, in which a thought, okay, is experienced, what it is you're experiencing, and I experience it through my heart, because that's where it gets to go the fastest. So you realize that the faster you go, something that's trying to feed on you can't catch up to you. So the only way that it can know our language 
is to be able to run at the same speed we do. And they can't do that. So they're not with us. Because they do things that are forbidden. That's why when I was a child and I'm looking through all my father's scientific manuals, I'm going, man, the knowledge that they acquired and how they use that knowledge, which is how they use energy, is forbidden. That's why I mentioned this on another video. All the genetic labs on this planet and all your schools, they got to be shut down. They all need to be rounded up. Okay? It's forbidden. You have beings that have no clue what the hell they're doing. But everything that they're using their mind's energy for in these universities, it's forbidden. And I figure Trump knows about this, okay? Because everything that they did here on this planet is forbidden. It's not allowed. Anywhere. Ever. Because anything is a thought transmission that is connected to what it is that they are, exists. And it's not supposed to exist. But it does here. So it's no different, for example, you're in a tribe, right? And all of a sudden you realize you have somebody in that tribe that's in a state of fear. You're out of here. Why is that? Because it's contagious. It'll spread like wildfire. And that means everybody's energy is going to go down. So if you want to use the exponential function on what fear, okay? Fear did not create the universe. We did. And the amount of energy that we use to do it with has got a hell of a lot of fire. That means the spirit is pure. Because the heart is pure. Because the light is pure. Because the things that we do with our energy is pure. Not contaminated. So that's what you have to do down here. You have to continually kick out shit that they produce. So the very fact that this many people don't can't see this, they can't experience this, and can't know the difference between what it means to be pure and impure is why we're here. So anyway, um, I think it's important that I share with everyone the importance of trying to get back in your heart. And I've tried to mention there's a lot of ways in which to do that. Okay, I put up day after 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 day on my Facebook page. I basically took it down because Facebook is worthless. Okay? The speed at which information is being traveled and then known and experienced, and if you want to measure it in purity, it's just too slow. Because it doesn't want to allow you to be able to experience what it means to be pure in spirit, pure in heart, pure in love, pure in compassion, pure in empathy for others. Because anything that's less than what that is, is lower energy. And you're not supposed to be experiencing that here. But we do. And that's forbidden. That's why love is a law here. That's why the gloves came off. So, one of the ways in which people can do that is doing a lot of writing. Spinning like a galaxy. How fast do you go on the spin of that galaxy? Right? I spend a lot of time in parks where there's a lot of mothers and fathers with their children because it reminds me of the child that's still in me, in spirit, of how much fun we can have when we're down here together to experience the higher vibrational frequencies in which we're experiencing who we are. And when you're experiencing what love is through your heart, then you know who you are. That's what everybody was supposed to be experiencing when they're in here. So I realize that, that the, the, the acceleration in which things are happening are moving, at least for me, through my perspective, what it is that I'm experiencing, which is the reason I'm putting these things up, okay, is you don't want to lose nobody. But I got to be realistic because there are so many people that I'm aware of, particularly when I'm in a city, 
that are holding the lower density energy consciousness from which their experiences that they had here, they're still holding on to. Okay? And if you're holding on to those experiences that represent what is forbidden, then you're going to hold yourself captive to those things that are forbidden. We're not supposed to be experiencing what fear is. That's who they are. That's not who we are. But they didn't know the difference. They did not have the advantage. And this is something that I had a discussion with myself among some other very powerful spirits about here's an example. Uh, you're born on a planet in another solar system. And unfortunately, you had a lower frequency sun. So your evolutionary development to experience higher energy against another solar system with another set that was high frequency meant that a certain level of souls had an advantage that other souls didn't. So that meant the speed at which they could evolve to graduate the speed to which they experienced the cosmos, okay, means that they get to graduate sooner than, than other beings. Well, that's not fair, is it? Is it? So you become aware of that here. Because you're beginning to experience the different vibrational identities that are here. They come from other star systems who didn't have the advantage that others had. That's not an equal playing field. Oh, I'm sorry, that's just the way that it is. No, it's not the way that it has to be. That's like saying that we accept mediocrity. I don't accept mediocrity. That's an engineering problem. That's lack of imagination. That's lack of creativity. That's lack of light. That's lack of love. Because it means now I'm experiencing beings that are running lower energy than what I am. I'm not supposed to be experiencing that anywhere. Why am I? Well, that's just the way it is. Well, what is it? Are we lacking imagination and creativity to solve the problem? Yes. The Achilles heel was boredom. Okay? That's ground zero for the problem. Lack of imagination. Lack of creativity. Lack of speed in that creativity and imagination to solve the engineering problem at this level of the cosmos. We all know that. That's why it's all under operational security. Lack of speed. That's what it is. Which means the universe is losing itself. So you got to raise the speed. Which is raising the light in this universe. That's the crux of the problem. And that means we all play a big part in solving that problem. That's why we're here. Aloha, Lanikea.